Hi folks, this is Vince coming to you again from the Tinkerer's Workshop. Today I thought we'd take a look at this old cabinet maker's workbench. This is an item that I picked up off of Craigslist several years ago. It's been sitting here in my shop ever since. And to be perfectly honest, I've been using it primarily as a dumping ground for stuff that I don't have room to store. So it was stacked pretty high with clutter. Now I've taken all that away so that I could get a better look at it. And what I'd really like to do is get this bench back into working condition so that I can use it here in my shop. So let's take a closer look. This is a pretty typical cabinet maker's bench. It has a sled foot trestle style base. The top is a solid slab glued up from two and three quarter inch thick maple strips. Running along the front edge is a row of dog holes. And at the back is a tool tray to set your tools while working at the bench. At the left hand end of the bench is a face vise. Typically this type of vise is used to clamp a workpiece either on edge or vertically between the jaws for tasks such as planing an edge or cutting dovetails. Then down at the right hand end of the bench is a tail vise. This allows you to hold workpieces on top of the bench between a pair of bench dogs. When I first acquired this workbench, I did a little research online and discovered that it was made by the Christensen Bench Company of Chicago. Uh, this company was in business from about the turn of the century up until around 1940. And one of the telltale signs of their workbenches are the fact that they have these pinned uh, joints on the tail vise. And that was kind of a giveaway that it was a Christensen bench. Uh, Christensen made all sorts of benches for schools and for industry. Uh, they made a lot like this style and then they also made some that were more of a cabinet base that had drawers and storage underneath. So it's a very interesting company and uh, I put a link in the description to a web page that talks a little bit more about Christensen benches if you're interested in reading about that. So you can see some of the issues here starting with the face vise. Um, you turn the handle, it starts to move a little bit, and then the vise screw actually starts to back out of the vise itself, so there's something going on there. And the whole thing is just really stiff and sticky and binds everywhere. It just doesn't uh, operate smoothly the way it should. The tail vise is actually in even worse shape. Uh, there's no handle at all on the vise screw, and when you turn it, it also just backs out of the hole. Uh, the whole thing is loose and it moves up and down way too much play in it the top has come unglued uh, it's not supposed to be that way so this needs some major overhaul and work to put it back into working shape i flipped the entire bench top over so that we can get a better look at the vices uh, this is the face vise and from what i can tell there's actually quite a few issues going on here with it uh, the first of, of most obvious is the fact that the handle is missing one of the end caps so this just falls out when you turn it unless you hold on to it with both hands so uh, it won't be a big deal to make a new end cap for that then if we take a look at the vise and the vise screw uh, you can see you've got this nice wooden vise screw and it passes through an oversized hole in the front jaw and then threads into a tapped hole in the rear jaw so that as you turn the screw this front jaw travels along with the screw to open or close but in order for this to happen you've got to somehow tie the vice screw to this jaw and that's the job of this piece right here uh, this is I can tap it out here this is what's known as a garter and it basically is just a little block of wood that's friction fit into a slot in this front jaw and it fits into a groove in the vice screw like that so that it just drops in this way and locks those two together but still allows this screw to turn so what I think was happening is that this had just actually worked its way loose a little bit, which then allowed this screw to back out instead of actually pulling the front jaw with it. It was just moving in and out of that threaded hole. So hopefully just having that hammered into place a little better will allow this vise to travel the way it's supposed to. 
All right, I've removed the vice screw from the jaw so that you can now see how the front jaw just slides here. Uh, there's a couple of rails that allow it to slide and then a couple of guides here that sort of keep it from moving too much from side to side and racking. Um, one of the issues I noticed that is that this rail here is slightly bowed this way. So uh, as the vise opens further, this end starts to rub along this inside guide. And uh, I don't know if you can see it, but there's actually a wear spot there where it's rubbing. So I think that I can probably come in and just shave a little bit of wood off the face of this particular rail here and that should allow it to travel a little smoothly. It starts to bind up right right about there. So that should be easy enough to fix. Uh, the other issue is that this piece here that ties these two rails together, if you look closely you can see that there are two screw holes here, countersunk screw holes, and then there are also two holes on the rails. So I think that originally this piece was couple of inches forward and for whatever reason at some point somebody must have removed this and set it back further which I'm guessing that was done because it allows you now to uh, if I can open this to open the jaws of the vise much wider by two or three inches wider but the problem now is that when you are backing this vice screw out, it actually disengages from the threaded hole in the rear jaw. So that really defeats the purpose. Uh, you can't really clamp anything because the screw's not engaged. So I think what I will do is take this piece off and put it back in its original location so that when the vice is open to maximum, uh, maximum width, the screw is still engaged. Alright, I've pulled this front jaw out of the bench completely and I don't know if how well you can see this but this uh, this rail is just really bowed it just kind of goes off on the end there so like I said I think if I come in and just plane a little bit off right here it should slide smoothly again I wish I had some old slotted screws just to be a little more period appropriate, but uh, these Phillips are all I had on hand, so we'll have to do. I rubbed some paraffin wax all along the surfaces of these guide rails and the uh, guides here, uh, also along the bottom of the top just to help everything slide smoothly. So still a little bit tight there, but it's not too bad. A lot better than it was. So here's a closer look at that uh, wood vice screw. This is uh, two and a quarter inches in diameter and it's got two threads per inch. So you turn it uh, two revolutions, backs the vice out by an inch, which is a pretty fast acting vice. It's nice if you need to open or close the vice uh, quickly. There's a lot of dirt and gunk that have built up in these threads over the years, so I'm just taking a real mild abrasive pad and going through here and cleaning that out a bit. And then I'll put some wax on here so that they turn nice and smoothly.
All right, I think that's good. Now let's take a look at the tail vise. Well, the tail vise is actually in better condition than the face vise. Uh, the guides and rails are all pretty straight, no, no binding there. Um, the only issues are that the handle is missing and the garter is also missing. So I made a new garter piece just out of a piece of half inch thick maple. So that will fit right down in there and pressed into place. That way when you turn the vise screw, the tail vise moves in and out. And as far as the handle goes, um, just a piece of one inch diameter dowel that will fit in the vise screw there. And for the end caps, uh, I took a piece of one and a half inch diameter dowel and cut a couple little short sections off of it, drilled a hole in the end, and then uh, rounded over the edges and the top so that it'll just slip right onto the end of the handle there. Got a couple of those after I put it through here. We'll glue those on and that will be the handle. You also remember this vise was a little bit uh, loose, wiggly there, flopping around. I think that once I flip the bench top over and I glue this top piece, this top plate back on, that should stiffen everything up and hold this vise uh, where it's supposed to be, keep it aligned. So I'll do that after I get the bench flipped back over and on the base. While I had the top removed, I thought I'd go ahead and take a closer look at the base just to make sure there weren't any issues with it. Uh, the base is pretty simple. It's a pair of end assemblies that are separated by two stretchers. A couple of locating pins at the end of each stretcher, uh, position it on the end assembly, and then some square headed bolts and nuts are used to draw the pieces together. A couple of issues. Uh, there's no washer underneath these bolts, which I think there should have, there probably were originally washers, so those must have gotten lost at some point. And then the other thing that's kind of odd to me is that uh, both of these, on both of these stretchers, the holes for the uh, nuts are facing outward towards the front, and that, I don't know, I just don't like the way that looks. So I'll probably flip this stretcher over so that the hole is facing inward, and uh, I think that's probably how it was originally. While I was taking the base apart, I came across this shipping tag that was nailed to the back of the rear stretcher. And the name on it is Dr. Woodbridge, Central City, Iowa. I did a little uh, internet searching and found out that Dr. Woodbridge was one of the doctors in Central City from about 1895 to 1920. So it's kind of interesting just to know who bought the bench originally and where it was shipped to. So I've got the top flipped back over and placed on the base and here I'm gluing the top plate back onto the tail vise. This plate had cupped over time so I had to do a little hand planing to get it flat again before I could glue it back down. One of the things that I really liked about this workbench was the patina on it. And I, I didn't want to go crazy sanding down the top because you'd lose all that color and all that character. But I also wanted it to be usable as a workbench. So uh, I, that, that requires to have it reasonably flat. Um, and this was actually in pretty good shape to begin with. It wasn't too out of flat. So all I did really was go through with a, a card scraper. I went around and just scraped the whole surface to get rid of any glue spills or paint spills that were on it. And that also kind of scraped off a lot of the dirt and grime that had built up over the years. Uh, there were a few spots where the, there were kind of high spots and I had to hit those with a hand plane. Um, Unfortunately, because of that, you can see the lighter colored wood under here. I'm not crazy about that, but hopefully those will darken up with over time. For finish on the bench, I use an old formula that I, I like to use for bench tops. Basically, it's just three ingredients, uh, some beeswax, and you take a couple ounces of that and put it in a mason jar in a double boiler and melt it. And then you add an equal amount of turpentine and then you add two parts of linseed oil to that and what that ends up being is is a uh, kind of a paste it's sort of a soft 
looking paste stuff almost like jelly or something and you can just uh, apply that to the surface let it sit overnight and then come back and buff it out with a soft cloth and it leaves a really nice satin sheen uh, it's it helps resist glue if you spill glue on it while you're gluing up a project and it's easily renewable so that's uh, that's not my invention but it's a very traditional bench top finish. So I put that all over the top so that I could kind of preserve the color of the bench but still give it a little bit of protection and really happy with the way that turned out. Well, the last step in this workbench restoration was to make some bench dogs. Uh, the original dogs were missing, so I had some scraps of beach and I just cut them, cut a couple pieces out to fit the bench dog holes and I put a bevel on the top to match the angle of the, the dog hole. On the back side, I routed a channel and then to create the spring, I took an old bandsaw blade and cut a couple of strips out of it, uh, ground the teeth off the edge and then rounded over one end and drilled the hole for a screw, put a couple of bends in it at the bench vise and that gives, gives it just enough of a bow to create a spring. So you can pop that into the bench dog hole and then set it at any height you want and it'll stay put. I usually like to have them set fairly low just so that they don't get in their way with the tools. So it'll stay right there. And then when you're done for the day, you can just push it down flush with the bench top and it's out of the way. All right, now that the bench is all finished, let's go ahead and take it for a test drive. All right, I'm really happy with the way this bench turned out. And uh, the only issue I have now is trying to figure out where I'm gonna put it right now. I've got it right next to my original bench, which is one that I made from plans in an old uh, English woodworking periodical from the uh, early 20th century. I made that about 20 years ago and I still like it. So I may try to move some stuff around in my shop and see if I can put this one somewhere in the center of the shop because I think it's the kind of bench where you want to be able to work around it from all angles uh, so that you can really utilize that tail vise. But anyways, I'm really happy with how it turned out and I hope you enjoyed seeing it and thanks for watching.